Hello and thank you for watching my 2048 video tutorial. In this lecture I'd like to talk about a very important concept while working with Unity UI that is called UI anchoring. We will also talk about how to design UI for multiple resolutions and multiple screen sizes. So for instance if we have designed this application to run on a phone, let's say an iPhone, and I would like the same application to be able to run on an iPad. So what I'll do to check that, I will zoom out a little bit in the scene, I will select our panel in hierarchy, and with this rec tool selected, I will go to its upper right corner and resize. So what has happened? We can see that if our screen size is bigger or the resolution is bigger, all the UI will just stick to the center, and there is an explanation for that. I will resize our panel back and zoom in. So when I select different UI objects that we have added to the scene, you might have already noticed that there are always these little triangles in the center of the screen, and in Unity they are called anchors. Anchors are a feature of a rect transform, and rect transform component is basically a component that we have for all the UI elements. Every UI object comes in this rectangle, and each rectangle has to be appropriately placed on the screen and with anchoring we can also control how it will behave when our screen stretches or shrinks. By default when we add new UI components most of them will have a default anchoring preset set to the center which means that these little triangles will be in the center and that all the UI objects will stick to the center. We can access these anchoring presets by going to our rec transform component and hitting on this icon. And when I click on it, this little window opens and there are many anchoring presets that are pre-made by Unity for our convenience. So if I click through some of these presets, we can see that the position of our anchors changes. I can move them to the corners of our screen or to the center. And I can also set these anchors apart. So, for example, if I hit on this preset, we'll have a similar preset to a preset that we have on our panel, which means that the anchors will be set to the corners. But to the corners of what? To the corners of the screen, to the corners of the canvas. Actually, the anchors are set to the corners of this game object's parent. So, for this button, we have just set the anchors to the corners of our panel. And if I drag this panel right now, we can see that our button has a different behavior. It stretches with the panel, but this is probably not the behavior that we want right now. So I will return to our button and return its original anchoring preset, which is center. We can modify these anchoring presets manually, so we can invent our own custom anchoring presets. So to carry out some experiments with anchoring presets, I will go and select our game field, because game field is currently the largest game object that we have in our scene. And we can see that its anchors are also set to the center of our panel. I can manually drag any of the anchors. So right now I'm going to drag this upper right anchor. And as you can see, when I drag them, they count these percentages. So basically anchors define percentages that our game object should occupy in its parent game object. It can sound a bit weird for now, but it will get much clearer when we experiment with these anchors. So I'll return back to our centered preset. Another thing that you might have noticed is when I have started to drag one of the anchors, we can see that our preset has changed before it was, it said center in the icon in the rec transform, and now it says custom, which means that it doesn't fall under any of the categories that we have in our Unity pre-made presets. But it's not necessarily a bad thing if you know what you're doing. There is another very simple rule while working with anchors. If some of the anchors stand apart, this means that the object will stretch. And if they stick together, this means that in that direction the object won't stretch. To demonstrate that I have assembled this simple anchoring preset, I've made these anchors stick together in the vertical direction and I made them stand apart in the horizontal direction. So let's go to our panel and I will zoom out a little bit and I will try to stretch our panel into different directions. So if I stretch it in the horizontal direction, we can see that with this anchoring preset our 
game field also stretches but if I stretch it in the vertical direction we can see that it doesn't apply any stretch to our game field and it remains of the same size vertically if I try to stretch our game field in all directions we can see that there is still this horizontal stretch but no vertical stretch I will return and make some other anchoring preset so if I change it and make it stretch only vertically we will have a very different behavior for our game field. Right now, if I make it bigger in the vertical dimension, we can see that our game field stretches. And if I make it bigger in the horizontal dimension, we can see that it doesn't affect our game field in any way. Now I'll zoom in on our panel, and I'm going to tell you about an anchoring preset that I use all the time. I even call it the magic preset because it works like a charm every single time. I will select the game field and right now our game field occupies a certain area on our panel and I will just grab these anchors and I will place them right in the corners of our game field. And now if I go to the panel, zoom out once again and I try to stretch it, we can see that our game field stretches both horizontally and vertically and it also occupies the same area relative to the area of our panel. Now when I make our panel much bigger we can see that our game field covers all the other UI elements but if we apply the same preset to our buttons, our titles and our texts we will have a nice UI layout that uniformly stretches and works in multiple resolutions. What I will do now is I will apply the same anchoring preset to all the UI elements to our game. So I will first select our title text and you can see that the anchors now sit in the center and I'll grab this upper left anchor and start dragging it towards our corner as I was dragging the upper left anchor, the lower left anchor also was adjusted. So I'll just drag these anchors and place them in the corners of my title text. Also might make it a bit bigger and readjust the anchors. I will do absolutely the same procedure for all the other UI elements that we have in our scene. So for example for this button I will also drag this anchor to fit in the corner and this lower anchor to fit in the corner. And I'll just continue doing this for all the other text and image components that we have in our scene. You might want to zoom in on a game object when you are editing these anchors because it provides you an opportunity for a more precise placing of the anchors. And with these score huts we don't have to forget that we also have these text components that are anchored in the center and we also want them to have our magic anchoring preset. So I have just finished adding our magic anchoring preset to all the UI elements and while I was doing that our numbers from the score and high score huts have simply disappeared but we already know what we should do in this situation so I'll just zoom in on our score and high score huts and I can select our score number from the score hut and I have to go to its text component and in best fit I have to lower the minimum size so I'll select 3 and we can see that our number has just appeared on the screen and the same thing I will do for our high score hut and you can see that I didn't forget to put these anchors to the corners of our score number and our score title. So I'll zoom out and I will do the same routine that I did in the beginning of this video. I'll go to our panel and I will drag the corner. Our game layout looks much better. It stretches accordingly to the space that we provide for it. So if I make it even larger can see that it still looks pretty acceptable so if I played this game now on an iPad it would still work and even if I stretch it in the horizontal dimension we can see that it still looks pretty much acceptable so I will return it to its original position so in this lecture you have learned how to build UI for multiple resolutions we have talked about UI anchoring and I have shown you my favorite anchoring preset which is very simple you just put all the anchors to the corners of your UI element. In the next lecture I will be adding this grid layout with our numbered tiles to the game field. We will analyze different ways of doing this and we will pick the best to achieve the best effect. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.